my goodness. Oh my goodness. That one? Oh, oh man, this thing's pulling. Here, let me get out of your way. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good oh my fish. goodness. Oh my goodness, folks. You're not gonna believe the size <laughs> of this fish. Oh my goodness. Matt, maybe we I'm gonna need some help. Maybe we should have put the net in here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, my, God. God. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, you know, man, you know. Look at that <gasps> fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, how big monster, is that fish? Monster fish. Healthy as can be. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Can you believe the size of that fish, folks? <laughs> Little candy leak fish. First fish. Oh my First gosh. Fish. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that'll pump <sighs> your heart in a heartbeat. There you go. Put your armband on, folks. <laughs> We're at Canyon Lake today. Look at that fish. <laughs> oh my goodness. We got our armbands on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, we got to get a shot of this. Oh, pull my camera out. All right. Oh my gosh, how big? That's gotta be every bit of five and a half. Oh. One, two, three. Okay. All right, you said your scale weighs my light, My scale right? weighs light. It'll weigh probably three quarters to a half a pound light on this fish. It always does at the tournament scales. 805. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I guess I was wrong. Oh my <laughs> goodness. What a beautiful fish. All right, let's let her go. Golly. Beautiful fish, all right, baby. Come on now. You gotta, you gotta really let them babies go. Look at that. There she See goes. You, baby. Matt, <laughs> folks, welcome <laughs> to Canyon Lake. This man right here owned this lake when he was a youngster, caught the state record here, and uh, decided, hey, John, we got new crankbaits out on the market today. We can finally get down to the depths we need to to catch these. Look at the size of this <laughs> crankbait. It's an XD-10, and I'll tell you what, man, you better have a good rod and a good reel and some good line for this. Matt, tell, tell us yeah. a little bit about the line, the rod, and all that stuff. Well, actually, I'm yeah, excited. I, yeah, that's pretty neat to see, but I didn't catch it, I'm excited. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you, these have been out a couple years, and I've, I've heard about guys using them, you know, in the tournaments, catching some big ones here and there. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, when I first saw this come out on the market, I just, I saw it, looked at it on the shelf, and just laughed. You know, they're, <laughs> they're 13, 14 bucks, and I just rolled my eyes and said, yeah, whatever. But, because, <clears throat> you know, these are the size crankbaits that I grew up throwing. <laughs> this is oh a, my goodness, this look is at a, that. yeah, this is a Rapala. Uh, you know, uh, fat wrap, and I we grew up throwing these in Arizona yep. in the 80s. That was all you needed, you know. That's the, all the you guys. needed. But <laughs> so you look at the difference in size. But one thing, and I'll tell you, I fished the the Total Bass Addicts tournament a couple yeah. weeks ago, and we fished at Saguaro, and we had a seven pounder in the oh. live well. And when we came to Canyon, the second day was at Canyon, there was a bluegill that was every bit a seven inch long bluegill that was half digested, that that, oh. that, that fish had spit up in my live well. So right then I thought, you know what? This this is a crankbait that that really is is more the profile those yellow bass that they're feeding on the bluegills. We find them in our live wells, crappie, yellow bass, bluegills, gizzard shad. A lot of these fish in Arizona are keying in on some of those bigger baits. So this isn't not <laughs> unnatural to these fish at all. You, oh. you see what I mean? So oh my it's a, goodness. it's a great bait, and we ended up catching another seven pounder in the tournament at Canyon Lake here. And you remember that that, oh, show, yeah. that show we did here? Exactly. I was reeling in that yellow bass, and a big what? Big fish came uh, up. Seven, and, eight and pounder yeah, tried to eat the yellow bass. Big fish tried to come up and get it. Yeah. yeah. And several times with a spoon when you're catching little yellow bass, so, you know you'll see some big chasers. So you know those fish just like that one are, are eating those yellow bass. And this is a great imitation for it. Great profile. Makes a lot of wobble, and it dives down deep. It dives over 20 foot with a long cast. Oh, so. Fish. First fish of the day, brother. <laughs> you got us on them, man. Canyon yeah, Lake, a... I don't come here very often, but uh, it's a big treat to come here. And I enjoy coming with Matt because he knows the lake like the, he fished this as a kid. Like I said, caught the state record here. It's actually in the restaurant here. If you stop and eat at the restaurant here at Canyon Lake, you can see that big fish. Matt's got it down here, a copy of it anyway. Yeah, almost 16 pound largemouth bass. Oh, you know, and, and unbelievable. I, I just gotta say thank you to the, the Arizona, uh, 
Anglers United, United yes. Arizona Anglers for, you know, we helped distribute the fish that they stocked in these lakes. I mean, Saguaro Canyon Apache are just doing fantastic. They're awesome. Holy cow, first cast of the day, that woke me up. I don't need no coffee. I'm telling you right now, man, that'll get your foot. I'll tell you what, here's what you gotta do. You gotta get yourself a good rod, number one. And I know that you like your fiberglass rod. What do you have there? Yeah, this is just a, a fiberglass cranking stick. And uh, one thing that I kind of learned the hard way, just real quick, was if you use too heavy action of a rod with the, the treble hooks, when those fish turn their heads and, and dig and make that fast pull, you're gonna lose a lot of fish. So, so what we're using is, is more of a parabolic bend. See the so tip? The, the, the rod yeah. has a, a parabolic bend to it. So when that fish runs, the, the rod absorbs for it. And, and you have a cranking stick from I have Bass a cranking Pro Shops, stick right? from Fast Pro Shops. Edwin Evers uh, uses this rod, and it's, it's really nice. You can pick it up at Bass Pro Shops. And uh, I'll tell you what, it gets the job done. And it says cranking stick right on it. You can't miss it. So uh, great rod. And uh, tell them about the line. Most people yeah. throw 10, 12 pound test line with their crankbaits. Totally different with this big old dude. Tell us about it. Yeah, there's still guys throwing 10 and 12 pound line with these big crankbaits because the lighter line you get, the deeper that bait's gonna go and the more action you're gonna get out of the bait. But we're fishing around boulders and, and grass and, and structure and that kind of thing. Um, I have it tied on 17 pound line and we've been, we've been catching a good fish at 17 pound fl it. fluorocarbon line. Um, and I know uh, some guys, you know, were using braid for a while. Uh, Brad, Brad Cook, Danny Halleck, they, they're really good with crankbaits. And, and with the braid, you don't get the stretch. You just a little bit of stretch with the fluorocarbon or, or monofilament lets that fish, <clears throat> when they flare their gills, actually get that bait in their mouth. So that's a good tip right there, honestly. Exactly, it's a, it's a great tip. And the other thing is, is you got to remember that you're throwing a bait that goes, how deep does this bait go? Over 20 foot. I, with 17 pound line, we're Unbelievable. definitely- Unbelievable. We're, we're digging the bottom and-, and that's just incredible. Well, th th that's the key to these baits. Is, exactly. Is you know, there, there's guys throwing the DD22s. You know, the the sure. Norman baits. You know, they dive to 22 foot deep. They say, but they're throwing them in five foot of water. You yes. want that bait to dig on the bottom, deflect off the rocks, hit the stumps, hit the structure, hit the boulders, and a lot of times making contact with the bottom makes noise. It has an erratic movement once it deflects off the boulders and the rocks, that kind of thing. And a lot of times you won't get a bite unless you're making contact with the bottom. That was the key on that last fish, just so you know. I felt it deflect off something down on the bottom, and as soon as I felt it deflect, I got crushed. So that's a good good deal. Eight pounder. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm pulling up over something. Oh, oh. <laughs> that fish? <laughs> look yeah, that. look at that, baby. <laughs> oh, that's just, oh. Oh Ooh. my goodness, Another there's nice a good one. fish. <laughs> I came right over top of that rock man, and boom, he hammered it. All right, buddy, you're done, come on. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is what you gotta be really careful with right here, is uh, <laughs> is trying to get these fish in the boat with trebles on them, because you don't want a treble that size in your... Just grab the line, lift them in, huh? Yeah, I got it, <laughs> Here's what I like to do normally, is just up in the belly a little bit like that. And then you hurry up and grab them like that. If you get them up under the, beneath the belly a lot of times, you can get them out and they'll relax a minute for you. Well, that's only about a two and a half. <laughs> but you know, that's a great bass here. Isn't that beautiful? But you see huh? the size of the bait compared to the fish. It's yeah. like barely fit in his belly. <laughs> oh my goodness. He hammered that thing right after I came over a big old rock or something. I felt it hit a rock and boom, he hit it. You know, one thing about throwing these baits, and Matt, I, I'm, I've seen you're doing it too. You know, when I'm throwing a bait like this, or even my regular crankbaits that we throw, I like to make my cast. Once I cast out there, I like to pull it, pull my rod tip and, and just get it start digging. And a lot of times once you start that dig, it really, it helps a lot. And then halfway through the pull, sometimes I'll pull it again. Do you do that? Absolutely. Just you want to make sure to make, like I said, get it down to the bottom, make contact. And that's the thing. Look at look at your bill on your crankbait. You want that to be scuffed up at the end of the exactly. day. Exactly. Good you know? tip. And uh, you're fishing it right if you're, the, the bill on your crankbait scuffed up. Yeah, don't be upset if you're not, if you're scuffing your the, the bill of your crankbait up. I'll tell you what, that means you're down there where those fish will eat that thing. But uh, that's exactly what happened, is I was pulling it, and I felt it hit a rock or something, and I stopped it for a second, and I felt the thump, and I got him, so that and was cool. Yeah, that's what's nice about this lake. We're fishing kind of a flatter area. There's a lot of grass that comes out. Yeah. You have some boulders, you know, little rock piles, that you'll feel that, that 
as you're as you're digging that crankbait down, you'll feel sand, and all of a sudden you'll feel some rocks. And a lot of times that little transition area where it goes from sand to rock will be where those bluegills are, and those bass are kind of staging a little bit a little bit of a break line, even if it's a foot or two. When that crankbait crankbait comes down there, that, that's a lot of times where those fish are staging. They'll eat it right when you start to feel that difference. Exactly, and we haven't had to do it yet today. But we just got started. But I want to throw out one little thing that's really key about using a crankbait as a finder for yourself. You know, you can feel the bottom, feel the bottom. If you find yourself around coming through the sand like what uh, Matt's talking about, and you find a bunch of pebbled rock or boulders that you can actually feel that thing thumping across, you don't catch fish, don't be afraid to turn around with a drop shot or a Texas rig worm and throw it in those transitional areas like that. Because I'll tell you what, you might be surprised. There's a fish. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, here we go. That one clobbered it. Clobbered uh, it. Oh, another oh good one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there you go, Matty boy. There you go, Matty boy. Come Hold on. Lee. I'm bringing it in. I'm bringing it in. Hold on. Hold on to that thing. You see the size Let of that fish? Let me get my fish. bait in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's pulling. Look at the size of that fish. You got it? You, got, you want me to get the trolling motor? You got it? Ah. Oh. Oh my Look goodness. Look at this side, another oh monster goodness. bass. Oh, you barely got him hooked. Go. Get that other hook in him. Get that other hook in him. <laughs> Grab him. <laughs> oh! Go! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Wow! Look at that fish. He clobbered. Look at this. Oh, you had barely one, hook one in, in him. the side. And see guys, this is what I'm talking about. The way that fish is hooked, oh. right there just in the skin. Oh. If you, yeah, I mean, you can look at that. If you have too, too heavy of a rod, I had one little hook in the corner of its mouth. And if you don't have a rod that gives, man, when a fish that size hits, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. Look at the size oh, of that Oh, I gotta fish. get the camera out, man. That is too good. That is too good, Matt. That's the kind of fish you catch on the Demix. We, 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 made, we made about 300, 400 casts in between the fish, but boy, fish like that, it's worth it. It's kind of a little skinny, but, he, oh, but he's got That's a, why he ate your bait. <laughs> Hold on now. All right. We're going to get us another shot here for your... we got to put it on the scale. I, I know we it will do that. It doesn't beat yours. Well, I don't know, man. That thing is huge. That thing is... He might have got me. Okay. Here we go, folks. Get his tail off the carpet now. <laughs> 680, 680, Woo. that is, and, and this weighs light. That fish will weigh close to seven and a half. That fish <laughs> will weigh close to seven and a half right there. Right there. Oh my goodness. I'll lose my crankbait. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> look at that fish. Matt, <laughs> what a job on awesome. that, huh? We'll let him go. A little Canyon Lake bass. Watch that fish, boom. Golly. <laughs> Two fish, one over seven, one over eight, 15 pounds and two fish, another two and a half. We've got what? 17 and a half pounds? For three fish. For three fish. <laughs> Are you kidding That's me? That's fun when that happens. I thought Apache Lake was the place to go. <clears throat> oh my goodness. And I'll man. tell you what, Great I was, job. I'll tell you what, I was reeling, reeling, reeling. And that's one thing is, is uh, you, I saw you kneeling and reeling trying yeah. to get the bait down because we're having a little bit of trouble getting the With distance this in this wind. Because the key is that longer, the longer cast you can make, the deeper those baits will go. And one thing that, uh, one thing that I did was uh, um, really, you really got to hold your rod tip down close to the water. That's going to exactly. make that bait dive down closer. And I finally made contact with some rocks and I felt, I felt it tick a rock. And that fish just absolutely inhaled Hammered it. it. Just inhaled it. But I'm glad you caught that had him hooked. I'm glad, you, <laughs> glad, you, glad we didn't get hooked on it. Oh, it's a little, my little, goodness. little dangerous when those giant hooks. I had to hug the fish because, man, that <laughs> thing started trying to come out. <laughs> we were talking about on the way up here, one, yep. can, one canyon trip we were together, I hooked yep. myself. That's the, right. the last canyon trip we were together, you hooked yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I've got this on there too, but I mean, no, I can't. I don't want, I'd rather have a drop shot hooking me in one of these. I don't oh, want man, you. Oh man, that's but. unbelievable. Can you imagine the kind of fish you can catch here in this state, the state of Arizona with a bait that big? You would have never dreamed. I was the same way Matt was. When I saw that, I laughed. I'm like, your arm is going to be wore out. The tools that you use to throw these baits though, you get the correct tools and you, the bait's really not that hard to throw. It's still gonna muscle you a little bit, but I'm telling you right now, this is fun. Put your, 
Put your wrist put brace, your wrist on, brace on, on, put your armband arm on, and you're good to go, folks. Start casting. <laughs> like I say, we, I guarantee we've made 400 casts in between oh, yeah. those two fish. And, yes, and we have. It's been worth it. Be consistent. Like I mean, if you're <laughs> out for some big fish, and really, a lot of times, and you know, and it's it's hard to do sometimes because you want to go out and catch the uh, qu uh, quantity of fish. You know, a lot of fish. But sometimes, if you want those bigger giants, you gotta take the risk. And this is a risk we're taking. If we were in a tournament right now, we'd only have three fish, but I'll guarantee you we'd be pretty happy with three fish right now. And guaranteed, I'll guarantee you we can catch more. Oh, yeah. we'd, be, we'd be styling, and you know, and that just goes to show, you know, you got a whole breed of swim bait fishermen that come out here fine with not getting a bite all day or looking for one or two bites. And, uh, you know, their bites like that, throwing those big trout swim baits. Yes. And, and winter's coming, you know, here, so it's uh, they're going to start the can, trout trout stocking. And can, can we catch 20 pounds today? Is that the key? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. We get, Let's get back <laughs> to fishing. Don't forget, we got the Tuesday night seminar tonight to do. Oh, that's Pro right. Shops. Yeah, we got to hurry up. That's another thing we've been scared about is, uh, you know, every, was it, second Tuesday of the month, Bass Pro holds a seminar. Uh, Matt heads the thing up with uh, Gary Semp. They do a great job. Of course, you won't be able to see it tonight. I hope you were able to make it. But uh, Josh Bertrand, the Elite Series angler, one of our good buddies, is going to be there. And uh, I'll tell you what, you got to make those. You'll learn a lot. And I'll guarantee you, tonight will not go without Matt talking about our day today. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> With the wind blowing, it really helps for the crankbait bite a little bit, the spinnerbait. You know, if you're fishing calm water and you like to throw these baits and stuff like that and you're just not getting bit, maybe drop off to a drop shot or, or, or a Texas rig or something else, the reaction bait really starts coming into its own when you get a little ripple on the water. And uh, I'll tell you what, you can go out there and go, oh, they're just not biting, they're just not biting. All of a sudden, the wind picks up a little bit. Go right back to your bait and find them biting. And, and a lot of it's just that breeze. A little bit of breeze means a lot. <laughs> you want a maybe, some, maybe one did. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. A good one? No. That was a decent oh, fish. No, that's a decent one right there. <laughs> that's playing a little video games. <laughs> Folks, I'll tell you what. It's been a heck of a day <laughs> on the lake today, hasn't it? A lot of fun. That's a nice fish. Oh yeah. That'll work. Not a bad. That's a good little keeper. <laughs> That's just a keeper, is what we call just a keeper. You hope you don't have to use those. And today we haven't really had to use fish like this. <laughs> With the limit we got, you know, five fish limit, that's uh that's not a that's not a giant by no means. They look bigger <laughs> down there on that thing. Yeah, when you throw an eight, a, a seven and an eight pounder in, like I said, it, even if you have to weigh a 13 inch fish with them, that's still a solid, solid, solid bag of fish bag. in a tournament. I think we've had a great day on the water today, brother. I mean, you've done a great job of, boy, I'll tell you what, Canyon Lake, you really can't beat it, can you? Oh, it's a lot of fun. So we're <laughs> Canyon, Apache, all the, we're really lucky in Arizona to have such good quality fish in these lakes. We really are. We are, we're, we're real lucky. And I'll tell you something else. I, I haven't hit a whole lot of this lake. And the reason why is because we haven't had the tournaments here. So I have had no re real reason to come here because anytime I do get a chance to fun fish, I want to fun fish a lake where I can actually practice for a tournament or something. But I'll tell you what, this lake has monster fish in it. We've had a great day. Like I said, that little bit of breeze helped that crankbait out a little bit. I think so. We got a few good bites on it, and it yeah. was fun. Hey, I've had a great <laughs> day, man. Thanks for showing us the lake. I'll Thanks tell you what, me. don't forget, the second Tuesday of every month, you can catch Matt Shiro, uh when he can get away anyways, down there at Bass <laughs> Pro Shops and, uh, and uh, doing some seminars. So definitely catch him. Till next time, we'll see you on the water. Matt Shura, I'm Johnny Johnson. We'll see you next week.